Here we go. So what we're going to do now is, is come back together after breaking out into our 3C groups, having in some really nice discussions. Um, I had the unique opportunity to walk around to each of the three different groups, and I have to say I was a bit struck by uh, how the groups are interact in different ways. Uh, oh, and really? I think that really speaks, I think, to something that we, we need to be aware of as we keep growing and, and building these working groups. But uh, So what was the... Uh... Well, I, I was here with the content group, and I think it was a, a very interesting, very civilized, very well-moderated discussion uh, with everyone actively participating. And then I went downstairs to the, to the community group, and there were at least five conversations going at every time. And everybody was very active and people talking over each other. A diverse community. But having a great time <laughs> and having a great time. But it was, it was very dynamic. Uh, and then I walked into the, to the code committee and they had to have microphones to speak. Uh, and we had to encourage people to, to interact and, and discuss. Uh, but I think Jay and EK did a great job of, of really pulling out the issues and, and doing that. But it was the most civilized group of the three, I have to say. Code. So, Code, yep. Oh, wow. And structured, and structured. Maybe structured is the better word. Um, but I, I have to say, in, in participating in the discussions, I was really impressed with all the discussion that was happening, the issues coming out. Uh, I think the, the 3C chairs are doing a great job of, of bringing people through that. And uh, it also became very obvious to me that the session that comes after this one, in which we actually go across these different groups, is really necessary, <laughs> given the, the not only the way we're interacting, but the issues that we have that really cross the cross the yeah. spectrum. So what I'd like to do is is have each of the the three C uh, chairs get up here, give us a quick summary of what their discussion was, uh, what the working groups are, and what their actions are going forward, and then we'll all come together for a group discussion. So Brian, yeah, um, well, Sirimon and uh, Julie, Sirimon from TR and Julie from uh, Rancho Biosciences. Uh, we're, we were a team, and we had a wonderful group, and um, we can we can post that group. It was, uh, uh, you know, it had a good mix, uh, government and Reagan Udall too, which is crazy like government, I guess. Uh, you know, industry, academic types. Uh, you know, Mateo was very helpful. He took off to the, to, to uh, uh, catch the plane. Uh, we had. Um, come up with the, the content committee has been working in an ad hoc basis and the thing that's really exciting about the um, meeting that we had today is we were able to pull together a critical mass around an initial vision and, um, uh, and uh, put together four groups that are related to one another and you'll see how that fits in a minute and uh, you know get folks to volunteer for that and then we have a, a, a streamlined process to get these groups working and uh, with defined deliverables and goals. And so the first, the first one is uh, we're, you know, kind of where the really rubber hits the road. I mean, we are going to catalog data sets and make them available with the appropriate metadata and against uh, reasonable standards and ontologies. More about that in a minute. And, you know, here's the good news. We already have 50 plus data sets, you know, uh, that are out in GitHub. That was an interesting discussion about GitHub. Get back to that in a minute, and uh, you know we have something to start with, and uh, so there's going to be a very practical, uh, you know, uh, activity here to make the data that we have available, and then uh, be ready to make more data available. This isn't quite the order that the discussion uh, happened, but it's okay; it'll all work out at the end. So there is one of four groups, you know, that is going to be involved involved in cataloging and delivering uh, various data sets with the Transmart grant that are collected from the community and will grow and become more uh, available as time goes on. One idea that came out, and Matteo was very helpful with this, was that this can be stratified. You know, some of it would be just data that's free with no strings attached. You know, on the one hand, you think about an app store, and then over on the other side, this could be data that had been curated by somebody, say like Thomson Reuters or other groups, that it would cost to get in, but all the data that would be available to the Transmart community would be in the catalog and against uh, you know the appropriate uh, legal and sharing considerations. More about that in a minute. And uh, we have people, uh, you know, and then uh, we thought we would launch the catalog and the repository against the website itself in case it's going to case of 
you know, skipped out on the code meeting, it would have been maybe uh, more boisterous and he joined our group and he's gonna be responsible for helping pull this spec together and work with the management team to get it on, uh, get it going. Uh, I'll get done and then I'm gonna let each of you guys uh, correct me. Then there was a, a group that was involved with curation and guidelines. Notice that uh, the word standards does appear, but it is not the, uh, we like the curation word a lot better than the standards word, I think for obvious reasons. And uh, you know, this, uh, you know, so think of it, you know, here, and then you can see the IP policy and legal, you know, and uh, boy, I'll tell you, we had, I, did we ever get Ken to join? I mean, uh, you know, we did, but uh, you know, that's a relatively small group. So think of it this way. You have, you know, kind of the policies for data sharing and some of the legal mechanisms sitting under here. And then, you know, this, uh, you know, this uh, catalog and repository and delivery mechanism is in the middle. And then underneath that is the curation mechanism that will allow us to inform how the data is organized and, uh, and will allow us to not only bring the data into the system, but the appropriate metadata in the system. And it should actually even enable, Sherry, uh, cross-study uh, analysis, which is, uh, came up in the conversation. And so now we have three, the catalog curation delivery group, a uh, catalog delivery group that sits in the middle. We have the IP data sharing legal on the top, and we have the curation guidelines on the bottom. And then towards the end, because we had some people that were interested in participating but didn't raise their hand, we found out that there was another group, and that was a group that was uh, involved in um, curating and prioritizing and helping us organize the analytic functions that we have. You know, think about it as the apps library, if you will, on the analytics side to uh, correspond to the data and information. Um, you know, and one theme kind of evolved out of all this, that there should be cross-cutting talk between uh, the code committee at one level and the community committee at the other level. We don't stand alone. As content committee, we stand in partnership with community and code, and uh, the uh, all these really certainly the, um, the the data catalog and delivery piece and the analytic uh, functionality piece uh, that includes uh, understanding what we have, uh, organizing that, making it available in the library. And Brian will help with this, uh, you know, and then understanding some of the gaps, imaging, visualization, various kinds of statistics working with community to help prioritize that, working with code to make it reality. So in the end of the day, we established four working groups within content, and uh, those are the working groups, and that's how they interoperate with one another, and, uh, and then I'll turn it over to these guys to make sure that um, you get your points of view in this, and uh, that uh, you know everything that I said is more or less right. And we have a of the group that's gonna make sure that everything happens fast. Uh, no, I think it was a really good summary, and I think um, at the end of the meeting, we've got um, serious action items, we know what the deliverables are, and we know who committed it to them, and I have the contact information, so um, we will make sure everybody delivers, and we'll, I guess we'll have to put timelines together next time, you know, for when we need everything back from everyone, but I think um, if we can get this done, and we, we will be running over other committees, because I see some stuff coming into the marketplace, I see some of it coming into the community, um, and that, but I, th I, I think if we can get some of these items done, it'll be really good. Yes. So I like to add that you know all the names that you see here is not you know the final groups that we're gonna you know close down and get things working. So please encourage your colleague, you know anyone else that you think will be interested in enjoying our working group, contact us, you know, and and get involved in in this. Oh, well, that's fantastic. I think we, we get the right group going there. And I, I like the, the, the sense you've got deliverables and timelines. That's excellent. That's, that's what we're looking for. I think we also heard, and, and I'll emphasize what, what Julie said, which is 
uh, if you happen to spend your time in one working group versus another, that, that's fine. It doesn't mean you can't go work with the other groups. Uh, please feel free, to, you know, as you see things coming across here, to get engaged across, across uh, uh, these various 3C committee lines. So uh, next up, uh, I think, uh, who, whose slides do we have next, or do we have slides next? The community committee, that looks like the one. <clears throat> so uh, Sherry and uh, Kevin, are you here? Well, Kevin is on the phone, so Sherry, you're on tap. So here, let me, uh, let me turn it over to you. Okay, thank you. Um, thanks, Kevin, are you coming up here or? Um, so as uh, Keith described, our discussion was very dynamic and vibrant, and um, I think everybody wants to voice their opinion, which is great. Um, what we discussed, uh, we sort of reconvened in terms of what we have decided in earlier this year, and then we went on to discuss the, the community, uh, the committee goals for the next, um, the actually overall committee goals is um, really engage in existing community, um, reach out to the current use base and understand what their needs are and reflect that their needs being their voices for the current users. And, um, and the ultimate goal is also growing the community to so expand our use uh, basis and hopefully next year at the annual meeting we'll, we'll have more participants and have more, um, a lot more interesting use stories to tell as well and um, um, stimulate the entire research. So in terms of um, uh, working groups, we actually um, revisited all the working groups that we did last time um, in early this year, and we pretty much agree that the working groups are, are as the way it is, and um, um, we started to, uh, so basically overlooking uh, communications, use case um, gathering, um, to, I think, uh, speak to Brian's point, and um, also in terms of user guide and training and um, uh, monthly community call, uh, Marketplace, Michael is really gave a, a really good presentation on that one. He uh, really stimulated a lot of discussion in the how to uh, provide a vibrant marketplace for, for the community. Um, we talked about the, the other the liaison into, liaison into the content and code committees. So, um, um, and also in terms of, um, I think we need more volunteer in that, in that area as well, and in terms of how to reach out to uh, current members. Um, in terms of three months ago at this moment, so we start talking about the details into every working group, and then we realized we ran out of time. We didn't have enough time to really come into the actual, the, you know, the, the real goal and then the really solid um, achievable goal in the, in the next three to six months. So what we decided to do is actually in the next three months, we'll have a weekly call, conference call, to define, to go through each uh, working group, um, in, to define the objective of that working group and what we really want to achieve. And then we can reach out to a wider community to engage more um, users or, or members for that particular working group. And it's, make that mechanism to go forward. And um, so, for as what I said, for each working group, we will define mission, group members, and the three to six uh, months goals. In terms of, um, uh, we also define, the, the, it's this, uh, uh, we also need to define a working group feedback mechanism, how we gonna say reconvene monthly basis or um, maybe more frequent and how we're gonna have uh, presentations coming from you know each working group that's really to be discussed in the in the weekly call as well um, and um, in general after that how the mechanism is going to go forward really going into the, the wider community as well no I think sure that's a, a very nice summary I think we had about 15 um, uh, people here today that that uh, worked with us through this session and one of the things that isn't necessarily reflected in the summary here but we as as a committee those that were part of the discussion today we will be as we go through the weekly conference calls as we try to define group members we will likely be reaching out to many of you to help us identify who from your organizations could participate and help advance the objectives of one or more of these working groups. And again, I think you know the theme here that we've been talking about um, all day as part of this entire meeting, um, the, the, the success of the foundation is only going to 
uh, be as strong or as good as we get participation from uh, the community, whether or not you're a member of the foundation or the community at large. So we will be making a very proactive um, 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 set of activities to really um, uh, bump up the membership on these groups so that they have enough uh, critical mass to be able to actually get some real work done. So we're looking forward to working with all of you. Yeah, and, and just to sort of add a tiny point, because I think certain um, member, I think a, a, a few other people will be interested in joining our com uh, committee meeting, uh, who's who is not present today just because they have um, uh, other interests in, in the content or in the code. Please do uh, voice your you know your interest as well to both Kevin and or I. Uh, or me, then, then that way we can also involve you on the, um, adding you to the weekly call as well. So. Yes. Thanks, Sherry and Kevin. That, that's excellent. I have to say, when I was, was listening to this group, one of the words I heard over and over again was use cases. And I think everybody is interested in being able to derive the right kinds of use cases across what's happening. And that certainly goes across code, community, and content. So uh, Jay and EK, uh, summary for the, the code committee. If here we just use our, our re report back from a year ago. So from Paris, all right. So basically uh, what we did last year was we, had, we ended up with three working groups, uh, one for engineering support, product management, and architecture. You can see all the tasks and responsibilities that there was a, we, we had a lot. Of, we did a lot of thinking and came up with a lot of lists. And the real, reality was, for 1.2, there were certain elements that we actually had to accomplish to get 1.2 out the door. So one of the things that we decided to do in terms of refreshing the working groups is to uh, first take the product man the product management group and the engineering support group, put those together in one that we're calling production management. Maybe it should have been production support, but basically have that group be responsible for any of the deliveries that that we make over the over the next year so that includes um, things uh, such as the release management uh, update management things of that nature uh, what was recommended that we actually have another group specifically for quality assurance so we put that together we have a few people uh, on 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 that group and what I'm hoping that will happen is not only will it deal with testing for for the uh, various releases, but also potentially quality assurance around the type of code that's 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 um, potentially around modules and codes and uh, code and things of that nature that might be um, provided to the community eventually. And then we're going to maintain architecture, and architecture really being a key one, especially over the next three months. I mean, there are a lot of people happy to be involved in in the architecture group. So I think first and foremost, we have two roadmaps. One, the release roadmap. I'm gonna go back a couple slides. So basically, in the near term, there's a plan for three releases every other month, December 15th, February 15th, April 15th. What we decided to do is rather, or EK calls them an internal release. So basically, these are releases that will be available on those dates with additional bug fixes. So essentially, there'll be 1.2 but hopefully more robust versions of them, and they'll be available for anyone who wants to download them. What they won't be are releases that are necessarily coordinated with, say, the community committee or the content committee uh, or the marketing organization of the foundation, but they're there to be updates to, to deal with any issues with 1.2. All right, and for the architecture roadmap, uh, two things came out, uh, one which is, uh, I think it was was pretty apparent across all of the members in the group is is the API and building out the API and ensuring that that's a that's a feature that we focus on from a development perspective. And I think what we need to do when we come up with that roadmap uh, and and what needs to be done in the architecture committee is in the next three months what we want to have is you know, those yeah you know, that roadmap the vision for that roadmap to present to the board. And, and basically, it, all right, I, maybe, I'll, maybe I'll just leave it there. Just say that's, that's what we want to do for the next three months. But I think what, what is important there is that there's a technical roadmap, 
but a technical roadmap doesn't necessarily make end users enthusiastic. And I think what we need to do is work very closely with the community committee to try to come up with a way that with that the architecture roadmap, the value of the architecture roadmap can come through in terms of the value for the community at large and, and particularly the, the people who are actually using this application and have a coordinated vision that we can bring to the board and something to, to move forward. And then the other thing that, that came up is ETL. And, and for me, it, it's interesting because this is like the one meeting that I haven't heard a lot of people stand up and say, well, there's really a problem with ETL. It's hard to load data into Transmart. I'm not sure if maybe that's everyone in the room is, is just aware of, aware of that. We don't, have to, we don't have to say it again. But, or if it's just a perception that it's an issue. Uh, to me, it's always, regardless of whether it's Transmart or the TRC or, or any other product of this nature, curation and data loading is, is a major effort and that has to be done. But I think there are some ideas here that maybe we can facilitate the ETL process within, within Transmart and have a plan to do that and, and have it again bring additional value to the, you know, to the system. So basically those are the two elements of architecture that came out as, as focal points. And hopefully those are the things that we'll bring forward in three months to the, to the board. Thanks. Yeah, so I pretty much at the same page with Jay. My feeling is, uh, you know, if you're really talking about the code committee, uh, my feeling is really people put the consolidation and uh, really into the first priority. For the architecture, right, everybody emphasized on the API which is really the really put the focus on the you know scalability as well as the sustainability and uh, you know there's a couple of uh, uh, you know if you look at this roadmap right if you look at, really look at the architecture we were thinking in mind is really try to make 1.2 to be uh, stable and uh, sustainable to be used in the next you know, right, one year or two and really make it a lot of people use it. But also, you know, we fully understand that is really we are now in the position of changing the wheel where you drive, right? So you really have to make progress on building new systems. So that is the key issue we have to balance about, uh, in one way, we will make the system to be accepted, to be used, and at the same time, so we've got to incrementally change it. So the API, as well as the modular development you know, ETL would be emphasized so much is because people want to load data in. So the other thing which we're talking about, I think the, you know, Keith already said, we looks very, very structured. And one way probably we're tied. Number two is really, really uh, feeling is we are now in the position of do things slow, but really solid to make 1.2, a solid base for development. That's my feeling is the right too. So one of the themes I heard through our discussion and I heard through working through some of these different groups was the need for some cross communication between the three C groups. In fact, one person suggested that the three C's in fact are the wrong names. And we should think about that. But what I wanted to do was take the opportunity to bring